corner besides your your uh, appeal process. What's coming down? What's well, there are, are there are they you know thinking about expanding the MPAs or what's what's happening from the other side? Uh, yeah. mm -hmm. uh, they're always thinking about. I mean, they wanted the entire coast to be an MPA basically. But yeah, I think you're going to see that coming up. I don't. There's nothing afoot presently. It's basically they're trying to evaluate how if they're working, whether they're working. Um, and then you know, they'll take you know, the Department of Fish and Game will take it from there. The they were trying to move the uh, the body that administrates the MLPA process out of the hands of the Department of the, the Fish and Game Commission yeah. and move it into a, to one of these this privately funded group. I don't recall the name of it. That legislation failed. Uh, thank goodness. Yeah. 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 And um, they also wanted to basically, if that, if that had happened, that would have just shut uh, anglers out of the process altogether. Our voice would no longer be heard in the entire process. So, interesting, interesting work in California. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, the Coastside Fishing Club up there is really, you know, they, to tell you the truth, I wish United Anglers was as good at getting their act together as Coastside Fishing Club is. They are out front, great communication. They're an internet-based club, but they're very effective. Um, but they lost their battle up there, too. The whole coast is covered with MTAs. Has so the United Anglers joined in with them? Or? Yeah, I mean, yeah we, we have a very tight association mm -hmm. with the Coastside Fishing Club. We thought one time it's actually emerging, and that may still happen. Mm -hmm. Uh, I would like to be able to see that if, uh, if I give money to United Anglers, and I am a member, uh, some specific things that you're doing, if you could kind of publish those regulars so that I, as, as a fisherman, can see exactly what United Anglers is doing every month there. And what I got a clear mean? picture rather than this sure. vague thing of give money and we need your help. <laughs> What's, uh, you're right, by the way. I agree with you completely. Communication. How would you like that communication uh, to take place? Would you, we used to do a newsletter and mail it out every month. And, uh, and you post your activities on your website? We can do that. We also have a Facebook page where we post our activities. Um, but you know, I argue strongly in favor of doing an e-newsletter. So yeah, so we go 100% electronic. Right. And that's the only one reason I ask you that. How would you like to get that information? There's a lot less expensive to do it that way. Yeah. 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 Plus, we really don't need one more piece of paper coming into the house. That's no, right. I mean, really, that's right. So I argue strongly in, in favor of an electronic communication system yeah. and, and yeah. getting our electronic database. That's why if you join or when you join or if you already have joined, Make sure that you have your email address in there so we can communicate. So we, can communicate. we could do a much better job. I agree. Yes. Okay, I'm a, I kayak fish. I launch from the back bay most of the time. And um, the M MPAs start from there and then go to the bridge. Um, as I'm going to the past the bridge, I'm passing all these fishermen on the shoreline. How come they're exempt? I mean, I don't know the regulation for the area, so they may not be exempt. They yeah, they, they are. They, they are. are. Yeah, anybody on shore, if you're out in a boat. That's a good question. I don't know. Um, <laughs> I don't know. There's a lot of goofy regulation. Why is where are you allowed to go in, in some territory? Some of the the MPAs you're allowed because a spearfisher go in and spear white sea bass, but but hook and line anglers can't catch them. Mm -hmm. I know why that that took place. By the way, it's because they needed the support of the spear fishermen in order. I mean, they, that was a trade-off. They said, "You support our plan, and we'll mm -hmm. let you go in there and spear fish." Wow. Hmm. Some people say it was tougher to spear fish. It may be, but that's the reason that happens. You're still taking the fish. So. That particular thing about Newport Bay is absolutely my number one top pet peeve. And I last night in my mind. I created a letter that I'm going to send to Carrie Wilson, the lady that publishes in the Western Outdoor News, and see if they would answer that. But that's exactly right. The entire area from the Pacific Coast Bridge all the way back to Jamboree, back there, 
is an, now an MPA. You're allowed to catch fin fish from shore only. So it's supposed to be an ecological reserve. They're trying to create this habitat back there. But yet, the LB, uh, we saw, last week, we saw 40 rods stuck in the mud with everything that's caught, killed, and thrown in a bucket. And, and it's just, it's so ludicrous. The fish and game folks are 150 yards away. Um, and what those folks fishing from the shore, it's, it's totally legal, but it's so absurd. I mean, it's just, it. it I, you know, I think at one point during the MLP implementation process in Southern California, the Game Wars Association said they would enforce. You know, I remember hearing Kai say that. Uh, now I believe they do, but I don't think they're out there actively doing it. There is a, there's an organization of environmentalists called the MPA Watch. They go out and uh, with binoculars and by boat, and they watch to see if there are people fishing in the MPAs. It's like a little environmental vigilante group. And uh, if they see you fishing, if they if they see repeat offenders, they talk to them. They said they will report report you to the DOG, and you know, the DOG has to go out there and cite you. They can't cite you. <coughs> Any other questions? Well, I was just going to say, I think that, you know, communication has been, like, say, one of the things lacking. So, you know, we used to have the, the newsletter that came out four times a year. So, you know, maybe with the Fred Hall drive coming up is get emails addressed because there has just been such a lack of communication. Right. Yeah, and, and you're right. We, there have, and I, by the way, I have to correct myself, but we do have one paid person, Robin Osborne. Who's, yeah. I always tell him, I say, you're paid weekly, uh, Robin, very weekly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, uh, but we, you're right. You're absolutely right. And I accept that probably more responsibility for that than anybody else. I'm a communicator. Right? And that should be helping more in that process. But we're, I'm always looking, by the way, volunteers, we're always looking for volunteers. So if there's anybody here that is, you know, proficient with computers and putting together email databases, I can put together the content, but I can't tell you, you know, Jason knows, I can't tell you how to put together a computer um, or even a PowerPoint. Um, but so we're looking for, you know, anybody and, any, and everybody that can help with putting together email databases, data entry, uh, that sort of thing. Anybody is interested. You know, one thing that comes to mind, you said it earlier, you stood in front of Costco and this public representative said, you know, that's not going to work. You know, we need a we need million dollars. You know, and that same thing, you know, we can get out there and, and start pitching uh, your organization, but the real thing is you need a marketing department. And uh, I know it's, it's money, I know that's a concern. But really, people need to know. And uh, there are professionals that do it and do it very, very well. And I think a lot of the fishermen out here are very ignorant. They've heard of it. Uh, when we're on a boat or something, people have heard of it, but they, they're just confused about it. And I really think that it needs a marketing alarm so that people understand the damage that it's done to the common person who wants to go out once, twice, three times a year and throw a line in the water. Right. How they're damaged. And, uh, so we really need a marketing. Right. right. And, and, and when you think about it, think about the, the financial um, base uh, behind the forces against us. I mean, they're backed by Hewlett Packard, which has more money. They make more money today than they can spend tomorrow. Charitable trusts, um, the Packard Foundation. These are the groups that are fighting against uh, fighting against this river. Well, is a Sierra Club or anyone, anyone like that against uh, against you? You know, I don't know the Sierra Club's position, but I have to. I would only speculate that they have to be on the, on the side of the. Uh, oh, of course. Uh, yeah. yeah. Therefore cutting the population of the earth in half so that we don't uh, cause damage. <laughs> so, I, I got to admit, uh, 
publicly that Val and I, you know, have been members for over, over 20 years. And last year at the show, I talked, I walked, I walked up to John and said, hey, hi, and all that stuff. And truthfully, we had not, we had not joined United Angers again. And it was, it was out of like utter frustration with the process that just tur turned us off, not to United Anglers and not to the concept of what we're trying to do, but, but the, the fact that we're, we're so underfunded com compared to the folks that we're fighting, it just it seemed to me like a, like a battle that could not be won, and, and I just gave up. But I've been resurrected here. I mean, I, you know, I'm going to go ahead and try. I mean, I, I really would like to try to see something change. And I'm so frustrated by it because it all seemed illegal, immoral, illogical. The, the process drove me nuts. Inappropriate, I, I believe. Yeah. Inappropriate. So, um, yeah, and I hear it. It's like, it's like, but on the other hand, I, you know, I'm like, I'm like, I'm a, I'm a internal optimist. I'm a fisher. I'm an internal optimist. So, <laughs> so um, I always believe, you know, they're up there, never give up. You know, fish to the last cast. And um, so uh, I'm going to continue to support United Angels in, in every way that I can, through my energy, my time, my pocketbook, and uh, my spirit. And if we can, um, because there's nobody else. There's nobody else. Well, let, me, let me ask you a question. There's some uh, fairly large entities. I'm, I'm an ex-salesman. I spend my life in sales. And Zepco and people like that that sell probably a million simple rods in California, they're going to hit a big downturn in sales in the state of California. Are they not getting involved in, in the anti uh, movement? Are they? Yeah. You know, are they being question. contacted? Have they not pooled their resources? We were at a, a small manufacturer here just recently. And I'll bet you they knock out 15% of their sales if this goes any farther. The sport fishing um, manufacturers are well aware of what's going on. And they're, when I mentioned the ASA, it's the American Sport Fishing Association, that's the industry trade group that uh, encompasses all of the um, tackle manufacturers, Shimano, Zebco, okay. Okuma, Daiwa, and you name it. It's, that's the group. On our really kind of advocating for United Anglers of Southern California, among that group has been Bill Shedd, who is a member of, of ASA uh, on the board. Uh, we also work very, very closely with individuals like Gordon Robertson, who's their legislative, um, I don't know his title, but he's the, he's the guy who handles these kind of things. Um, you know, they're, they're well aware. To be honest with you, you know, this battle has taken place. They feel like they're, you know, they had to withdraw from California and lift their wounds for a while because they have other challenges in other parts of the country. There's a similar challenge taking place right now in Biscayne Bay, Florida. Now, the one thing about Southern California, unlike other parts of the country, fishing is not cultured here. But if you if you have traveled anywhere on the East Coast, you've gone to the Gulf Coast, Texas, Florida, along the Atlantic seaboard. Um, even up in the New Jersey and New York. Fishing is culture. In Florida, they name streets after fish. You go into restaurants, they have fish pictures all over the place. Boating and fish are culture there. They are not in Southern California. Southern California said, from a sociological point of view, we have based our entire culture on cars and surf and movies. Nobody here really identifies with fish. Despite the fact, this is interesting, big game fishing was born in Southern California born in Cat at Catalina. This is where the first big game fishing took place. And yet it is kind of wiped out. Interestingly, I, a friend of mine caught a big shark. He wanted to take it to Avalon to, to weigh it in. They refused to weigh in the shark in Avalon. The home of big game fishing, and they refused, they said it scares the tourists. <laughs> <laughs> So they're moved on to other part, other battles now, and I don't say that they, they've forgotten us, but they have, you know, they said, God, if we lose Florida, if the environmentalists take over Florida, we're really in trouble. 
that's where the next battle is taking place right now. Yes? So I